Well, we came up with the song because we knew the, the Broadway stars were going to burst into the gym and interrupt this very tense moment at the school. And originally, this song was a duet uh, for Barry and Dee Dee right. called This Poor Girl. And um, we decided that, you know, it probably should just be Dee Dee's moment. Yeah, we wanted to make it her, her number, really. And uh, also because her character is much more there for fame. I mean, Barry is, but he also sort of cares about the issue at hand, whereas Dee Dee is just there for her. We were noticing in workshops that people weren't liking Dee Dee, and yeah. it was, <laughs> she was a little harsh. Yeah, so <laughs> the lyrics were really harsh, and she was sort of attacking people. Let's make her likable, and what we'll do is just make her really uninformed. And that's where the comedy comes from. Mm -hmm. So we wrote this intro where she doesn't know the name of the town, and she doesn't, she sort of read an article, <laughs> but she didn't read the whole thing, but she's mad, you know? So, yeah. so that's sort of where the, the intro came from. Yeah, and we wanted to, her to just burst through the doors and just have something like, you know, some crazy fanfare. So she bursts through the doors, and it's. <laughs> Weber recitative thing where she's I want to tell the people of whatever this town's called um, well, I know what's going on here and frankly I'm appalled I read three quarters of a news story and knew I had to come unless I'm doing the miracle worker I won't play blind deaf and Next part, you know, uh, we kind of wanted to make this a tribute to Andrew Lloyd Webber, and he does. A, uh, and I wanted to write a song that has kind of odd meters to it, because a lot of his his songs are, um, you know, like uh, like Sunset Boulevard is like in five, and, he, and all of his stuff kind of, uh, you know, a lot of his um, more aggressive songs have, uh, you know, strange meters. So I wanted to write a number in seven. So it's basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it kind of keeps everything kind of urgent. Dumb! Listen, you bigoted monsters, just to do you think you are. Like You're I said, it sort of helped set up this idea that she's totally misinformed. And uh, I love the way Casey staged it, too, because, of course, yeah. she comes in and she strikes about five poses in two seconds. <laughs> you know, it's just like, look at me, look at me, look at me. You've known Beth yeah, I know for... Beth forever. I, I was, uh, when she was the standby for Christine Ebersol and Mary Testa in 42nd Street Revival, I was, I played in the pit. So I was one of the rehearsal pianists there. So I got to hear Beth sing all the time. And then she actually took over for Christine. And I was playing the show every night by then. And uh, I heard her sing so many times. So I really got to kind of learn her instrument by listening to her eight shows a week. So, you know, there are certain notes that you know when Beth is building up to, if you build Beth level up to a C natural on a great open vowel, she's going to soar on that. Yeah, and the other great thing about Beth is she'll try anything, yeah. but you can also go to her and say, that joke isn't landing. And you know, that was one of the things that uh, she helped with because she was like, oh, that lyric is funny, but it is really mean. Yes. We were afraid people wouldn't get the Beauty and the Beast thing. Um, oh, so, yeah. so we had Hawkins, Mr. Hawkins go, she was the teapot. And then uh, Casey's like, I'll just have her be a teapot. We don't need to like spell it out. So we were happy that, you know, people got it. No, go on and threaten to riot. It won't phase me in the least. I understand the furious town folk. I did beauty and the beast. Some people don't care about perfect rhymes, but I am like, I try every single time to do a perfect rhyme because it just, for me, it just drives me crazy because it would just take a little more time and concentration <laughs> to get to a perfect rhyme. And it's not always easy, but for me, it, that's, you know, that's really important that the rhymes are absolutely perfect. It just perfect. helps the audience understand it on the first listen. That's the thing. We get one shot to listen to it sometimes, and if there's perfect rhymes, you can, you hear it better. You comprehend it better. I'm no stranger to slander, so my dear, you're not alone. The Post once said I was too old to play Ava Perot. Ava Perot! Story, damn it! Join me and we'll start fighting. Could I get softer? Lighty, 